Hey everyone! Thanks for tuning in to You Do It. Today we're gonna start ripping this carpet off and replacing it with beautiful lemon flooring with wide stair noses. And if you're ready, I'm gonna show you how you do it. Let's go! As you can see, these were just cut straight and then cocked. These were all cut 90. And of course, well they're not. Well they're in and out. Anytime. So of course professionals, we do have a stairmaster tool, which basically is an adjustable. You can spread it out and you can adjust these things here. Obviously I don't expect you to have a professional tool or go buy one for three hundred dollars just to do one staircase. I'm gonna show you how I used to do it a uh, long time ago, when I did not have a stairmaster. Nobody had that. So of course a very important thing to know. See how they're nailed here? You can see these nails. Nail holes right everywhere, the field, but you see them. And what these nails in the middle here do, your staircase is never flat. It's never straight. It always curves down to here and curves in to here. Why? Because the stringers on the sides are attached to the walls and the middle stringers are basically hanging in the air. So with time they sag, which creates this unevenness here. So if you shoot nails right here in the middle, it pushes it in and so it becomes crooked. Same happens here. So then you need to go and undercut this. This was undercut. That was undercut. Or you get these gaps here. I do things quite differently. And of course I don't find out these angles with squares. So what I do, I take this measure and I go half inch shorter, 42 and a half. 42 and a half. It does need to be a good, good line, 90 degrees. Actually I have to do it from this side. So this is the factory edge here. And I measure the width of the staircase. It's about 11. And this one is 11 and a half, so it's good for my purposes. And then uh, you can use a chop saw, a sliding chop saw, to cut it. I use table saw to do it. And so, okay, well most contractors, or pretty much all of them, if they don't have a Stairmaster professional tool, they'll use a square to check this angle. Or they'll use a framing square, which is basically a 2 by 24 by 16. They'll put it against this, and they'll look at this angle. <clears throat> because now it goes from this point to this point. See? Now it's resting against these corners. Now look here. Uh, about 8 of an inch, 3 16 of an inch gap here. That's all those in. Very easily. So all the way in here, all the way in here. But a gap here. Alright? So, this is the square. It's supposed to be right there. So it tells me there's a gap there. But this true square tells me that this gap is twice more. And what this guy was showing me, we have this one, which is 16th of an inch. Without it, it's not even that. It's about half. Okay? Now, of course, this one is not as bad as some of them will be. Imagine this going in quarter inch, and that's usually the case. Anywhere from eighth of an inch to quarter of an inch, sometimes even more. Especially in our older homes, where these middle stringers have sagged with time. And so everything got bowed. And so now what I do, I rest it against the back wall, shove it into one of the corners, I take the back measure, and I make it about sixteenth of an inch shorter. I don't want to fight with these walls. I want my piece to just drop in, basically, without scratching walls, fighting it, banging on it. So 42, 42, it's a three-quarter tight measure, and I'm going to make a sixteenth of an inch shorter. It's going to be 42, 11, sixteenths. Now, all I do is I look at this line. And so I need to add maybe sixteenth of an inch there. So I just do zero on the top, plus one sixteenth on the bottom. I stick it into this corner, make sure it's up against the back, and this is almost three sixteenths of an inch here, which means I have to remove this distance from here, right? And so I'm going to put, of course, the back measure you never mess with. This is your back measure. So you add sixteenths of an inch there, and you actually remove three sixteenths of an inch here. So this piece can go all the way in. This is our measure, right? So we're going to do minus three sixteenths here. And in the same fashion, I'll go over, and of course you put a number. Then you do the riser in the same way. So this is your run. Then you do the riser. And I'll actually show you how to do it without all these nails here without all these nail holes. I have a way of making it without 
damaging the finish then having to fill all these nail holes and they're distorted you can feel them when you drive a nail it kind of gets damaged and gets distorted okay i'll just take it out eighth of an inch or so okay and then you do want have clearance on the back at least eighth of an inch because this part fits behind it like this so we don't do too many nails i like to have i always have this connection so i have about eighth of an inch quarter inch quarter inch from here i want this male amp to be preserved because the way this stair nose operates basically slips into the male edge Okay, so I need one at five. See, there's an ancient cord that's gonna be left. And I'm gonna use it on my uh, vertical piece of riser. This way I don't end up wasting lots of material. So let's grab this. Let's grab the other piece. I need to put off anymore. Oh, I think it's perfect. I'm gonna remove eight of an inch on this side. So instead, I'll mark it back eighth of an inch, connect the lines. Here, so basically my measure is from this mark to this mark. Here is the same thing. I'm gonna do 90, I'm gonna mark it here, and I'm gonna see what I have to do. I have to add <coughs> 1 16th of an inch here. So I'm just gonna add it, connect these lines. I just set a gap here. I'm gonna take it all apart later. I'm gonna set a gap here. So this riser fits here and behind. This way I don't need to nail here. You kind of interlock. I'm just checking that they're all gonna work out. Apply my glue on the back side of it. I do want to take this and strike it like this. Of course, I will be double checking things. Before I put glue on them, I want to double check. Lay down like this, and you will need something a bit more to drink. This guy, I go like that, and this one doesn't require too much glue. A piece that's gonna stand here like this. Okay, most people will put a bunch of nails, will put right nails here in the middle, push it in, so it will take the form of their existing staircase, which is all boat. So I don't like doing that, obviously. So since the riser sits here, I can hide a couple nails right underneath it. Okay, and of course, you do want to check this, you want to make sure that it all fits properly. So you can use inch and a half. For this, I use one inch. Chances of them bending and coming out the other side are smaller this way. So right there, and I don't put anything here. I do put one at the angle like this, another one at the angle right here. I don't put anything here because I don't want it to take the shape again. This old staircase has been second for 80 years. Yes, I hear you. I don't care. I'm working. The reason I use subfloor, liquid nails subfloor and deck is because when you get it on your products it's easy to remove it with just these gloves okay and now i'm not gonna put anything there the glue will catch it and then i'm just gonna drive one or two right in the corner somewhere 
try to drive it into that, like this. And don't drive anything here, see the gap? You don't want to push all that stuff in there. Just want it to catch. And go from the other side. I'm doing this, and I know nobody's gonna walk on them for 24 hours. If you do have traffic or anticipating traffic, you should definitely put more. Okay. About half inch overhead. It's gonna hide my nails. I'm just gonna put one here, and look put on the angle down. This. Make sure it's down all the way. There. And nothing here in the middle. And I'm going to show you how to do without nailing through these days because they're shiny and sleek. So these holes in these surface will be showing. You'll see them. So instead, now I'm just going to put glue everywhere like this, like that. Okay? Like the waves. Triangles. And I don't want to make sure I got glue on this piece as well. So now I'm going to put it in. It's going to just glue this whole thing together. Now it's going to be holding it all together is glue and those nails. I'm just going to put it together. Let's see if I need any more. It's pretty good. Let's hold it up. Just in case. Pull it and glue it together. And one more. Now. I want to make sure that it's not lifting, right? Of course, all right. Well, we can do is this. I can put another one like this. If I have to, I didn't have to this time, I'm going to show you. But sometimes you do that. Just like that. Then you don't want to step on a stair, I'm going to step right here. I'm going to do it. Step on a flat board, go up if you need to. Okay, so I'm putting it in the gap, as you see. And I do dots. And I do white dots. Not one single dot, like, on the spot, like this. No, you go sideways, like this. And this one, this there now, is overlap. So it's extremely delicate. And if it's not done right, potentially, you can do it well. So I do use lots of glue. So if you, when you put it in, hold it below. And I do nail it. These I do nail. Okay, so my riser is here. I don't want to nail it into it. I don't want to nail here. And I don't want to put my nail here. I want my nail to be right over this. This. So I flip. And I put one right here. One there. Okay, now I can put you down. And I'll do the same thing here. We're done here. Look, I barely went through one rack of these. I still have left. Well, job well done, people. It's time to go have some beer and enjoy a short weekend. Of course, don't forget to put a big ass sign to let everyone know. Don't go there.